no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave to False Family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. President Herbert Hoover once said that fishing is much more than fish. It's the great occasion when we may return to the fine simplicity of our forefathers. Freshwater fishing represents man's need to be still to escape the struggles of daily life. The one exception, bass fishing. Bass fishing changes second by second. Cloud cover, no cloud cover. Wind, no wind. Water rising, low water. Cloudy water, muddy water. I mean, it's a constant changing deal. And, and you have to have a thorough, thorough knowledge of bass, their habits, how they react to this, how they react to that, and then a lot of luck, man. <laughs> <laughs> However, anyone who has witnessed the start of a high-stake bass tournament like those held several times a year here at Toledo Bend Lake are familiar with the swarm of glossy metallic boats roaring from the starting point. Professional bass tourneys are huge, and tournaments such as this offer prizes worth tens of thousands of dollars. Well, John, when I quit in 06, I quit bass in 06, and uh, back then a, a big prize was 50, 60 grand, you know, 75 grand. Uh, now the Andes went up a little bit. These guys were winning 100 grand a tournament, and if they win the Classic, it's 500 grand. Of course, it's cost them more to play the game. I mean, their entry fees now are like five grand a pop. I mean, on the deck at any one time, we'll have anywhere from six to 12 rods, and every one of them will have a different lure on them. And these rod and reels aren't cheap. I mean, they're like three, four hundred bucks a piece, you know, at the, at the lowest price. But time is everything when you're competitive fishing. The last thing you're going to do is pick up a rod and have to retie a bait, you know, and get ready to fish again. You pick up another rod, it's got a different weight on it, boom, 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 get it going. It makes it a little hard to believe that in 1895, you could buy a bass rod from the Montgomery Ward catalog for just 35 cents. And if you needed fishing flies, they were 10 cents a pop. Toledo Bend Reservoir, where we are today, was created in the 1960s, a joint effort between the states of Louisiana and Texas. The Sabine River, forming part of the boundary between Texas and Louisiana, supplies Toledo Bend Lake. Before creation of the reservoir, there was just the river and a few small towns, farms, and timberland. What makes Toledo Bend such a great fishing spot for largemouth? John, several things. First of all, it's immense size, okay? Number two, and maybe not necessarily in that order, it's located so far south that we have a year-round fishery. You know, Toledo Bend offers any kind of fishing you want to do. You can fish for grass, you can fish with wood, you know, you can fish structure, uh, you can fish docks. I mean, it is an immense fishery, 186,000 acres of lake, and it is full of largemouth bass, absolutely full of it. Of course, our freshwaters brim with all kinds of fish, not the least of which is the sunfish, what we cook sometimes lovingly call panfish. In Louisiana, we call them brim or crappie or sockele. Whatever you call them, these favorite fish make for good eating on or off the bone. And where there's food, friends, and fish, there's always going to be a few good tales to tell. 
The total economic impact of recreational freshwater fishing in Louisiana is close to $1 billion, and the vast majority of our anglers are Louisiana residents. Despite centuries of fishing the same waters, Louisiana's lakes, streams, and bayous still offer an amazing assortment of fish to catch for sports and food. And just as American colonists enjoyed roasted bass or fried crappie, we too still enjoy these great delicacies today. It's people like Randy Ziegler and his family who live right there on Toledo Bend, beautiful lodge there, hosts us every time we come up. He's always wanting to do something. He's an example of somebody who follows his dream. All right, y'all, you can tell we're ready to cook. Look at the smoke right here. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen, we say, huh, Randy? That's it. Y'all, Randy Ziegler right here. We're coming to you uh, from a beautiful Toledo Bend Lake. Isn't this a gorgeous spot over here? And you get to live it every day, right? Absolutely. Now, what do you have on the lake here? Now, you and I have been friends for so long, and I know you have the landing restaurant over in, in uh, Natchitoches, but what else happens on the lake in your business? Well, my family owns Wildwood Resort, and uh, we are the longest ongoing marina on the uh, Louisiana side of Toledo Bend. And uh, it's been the family for almost 35 years. But you know what, y'all? When people ask, what are they fishing on this lake? a lot of fish but take a look at this this is a beautiful largemouth bass that was just swimming in the lake a little bit ago and we're going to get to him in a minute but i want to make the sauce because this is going to be an herb largemouth bass that's going to go into the oven Sounds so good. so we're going to start off with a little bit of our trinity this is a little olive oil look at this garlic uh onion celery all of that oh you know it's good and hot huh i'm going to even throw in a bay leaf and then of course a little bit of uh of uh, lemon as well. You can put that off yes, to the sir. side. And uh, so th this, uh, this, this sauce is just a good basic Creole sauce. And of course, it's something that you cook a lot with as well. Huh? Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, now, the, uh, this, this area, isn't this area known uh, more? This is a Spanish uh, uh, community of Louisiana, right? Is that? Yes, sir. The, the, um, as people explored Louisiana, you had a lot of Spaniards that, that settled in this area. And um, a lot of the names of the cities and, and even Sabine is a Spanish name. That's one of the things that I find most interesting about Louisiana. Every 15 minutes up the highway, <laughs> a different nationality, different names of communities, Absolutely. and of course, different scenery like we're doing here now. And what we've done today is to take one of these beautiful bass. I've, I've gone ahead and put, we're doing it bone in. Mm -hmm. We have salt, pepper, granulated garlic, herb, herb baked. So I'm going to put some nice basil, thyme, and you can just kind of rub that in with your hands. Yes, sir. I'm going to put a little dill on it, and uh, just kind of rub that on there. Good guy. Get your hands in the cooking, y'all. Now, open up the belly. Just kind of turn him upside down. Open that belly. I'm going to put some herbs down in there as well. Yeah. And I have onions in my baking pan because I don't want the fish to stick to the bottom of the pan during cooking. So you can lay it right across the Would we the like bottom. to stuff this inside, Oh, absolutely. Okay. And y'all, the more the merrier. Whatever herbs you like. Y'all, this is going to go into a 350-degree oven. It's going to cook for about an hour, possibly, because you don't want to overcook and break the fish. And look, just grab that one right there. You got to take a look at this. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. Largemouth bass, Toledo Bend Lake. If you hadn't been here, you're missing out. Come on and see us in North Louisiana. Look how beautiful that is. Huh?
What's better than a silver dollar pancake? Well, I'll tell you, pancake batter fast. For breakfast, you say? Why not? They're great no matter what time of day you serve it. Well, y'all, the batter's all made. Uh, flour, oil hot. JT's right here on the uh, dock with me. Jerry J.T. Thompson. Uh, I I'm going to say a bass and crappie guy from Toledo Bend. And the name of his company, Living the Dream. Uh, can you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How you doing, man? I so doing nice. good. You know, I was on your dock a, a couple of yep. weeks ago, huh? And now, now, now yeah. we re reverse the role. Is, this, huh? is, this is awesome. You've got a wonderful <laughs> place here. Y'all, if you think this is a wonderful place, you ought to see what he has in a wonderful <laughs> place. Now, you know, come living... Come see. You know, yeah, absolutely, we want you yeah. to come see. Anyway, uh, uh, JT, uh, living the dream, uh, 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 you know, when I when I think of Toledo Bend, I, I know it well. I've, I've been there a hundred times. It's a gorgeous place to live the dream. A lot of folks might not know exactly where is Toledo Bend, what is it, and what do y'all do there? Toledo Bend's on the, the uh, it's the Louisiana, Texas border. Um, we're out of Manny. Um, we're, it's about 70 miles long, uh, 185,000 acres of lake. Wow, and, wow. Uh, living the dream, we started about 13 years ago, and uh, we take people fishing every day just about. Now, now, now do you take novices out? Or every, now, yeah. now what about a guy who's never had a, a, a rod, a line, a pole in his hand? Uh, how, how long does it take for you to hook a fish for? Oh, not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. We, uh, yesterday, I had somebody on the boat and never caught a fish before. Yeah. Um, she was, uh, it was her birthday, 50, I think she was 58 years old yesterday, and, and wow. she had never caught a fish. And she's from Louisiana, and had never <laughs> caught a fish. Well, so that was, it, that was good. Well, you know, talk about never caught a fish. Y'all, I want you to take a look at that magnificent platter, and this is what's coming out of that gorgeous Toledo Bend Reservoir. Why don't you tell us exactly what we have here? Uh, got a largemouth bass, and <laughs> it's, a, it's a big one. And uh, then we've got, uh, we've got a white sockeye here, a crappie. I, I call them crappie, but y'all call them sockeye on down south. Right, That's right. what y'all call them. And then we have a black one. Now, the meat, I mean, it looks like that fish has a tremendous amount of meat on it. It's so sweet. And, look, and how Absolutely. white that is. What is the, what's the flavor of that fish? When I look at it, I think of how pure and clean it, it looks. It is. It is pure and clean. Just, it's meat. Uh, it, there's not any fishy taste to it at all. Just, it's, it, it, that's the best thing that swims in the lake. Wow. Well, you know, why don't you give me a piece of it? I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with this. And, y'all, I want you to, this fish in your mouth like butter. It's so sweet and so clean. And this is a recipe that was given to me at a hunting camp a while back, and I thought to myself, what an innovative tempura-style <laughs> recipe. Pancake batter, milk, you're mixing these together with a couple of eggs and a little oil that went into the batter, and this is what it is right here. So I take the, uh, the, uh, the bass or the crappie, either one. Now, now, pretty much they'll cook about the same, right? Uh, right. And it might not take quite as long to cook a crappie because he's, uh, it's a little thinner and uh, the texture is a little lighter. But this cooks so quickly too. I'm cooking this in about a 340 degree, 350 degree oil, and I'm gonna just put it down in there like that. And it cooks so fast, the batter, because it is a pancake batter, it has a little sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So if you try to cook it on too high of a heat, it's gonna turn really dark brown and, and, uh, and just take away from the overall flavor of the fish. But what I like about this, you can kind of walk around. It's almost like a fish in a, in a pocket. You know what I mean? It almost has its own little little uh, batter to it uh, that you can hold in your hand. And it's just a wonder, wonderful, wonderful flavor as well. And all of the seasonings that go into this, besides the pancake batter itself, is just a little salt, pepper, Creole seasoning. And, uh, and it's, just, it's, it's as simple as that. And I'm gonna turn this over because you can see just how, how fast this fish has started to brown. Do you see that? Um, look, look at that, just absolutely, and it's starting it's to float starting already. Mm -hmm. See how fast? Now what about, do you have a partner there who is, who's a genius? I enjoyed talking <laughs> to him, and I know, I know they visited with him as well. Absolutely. How's, how's he doing, and, and his story is incredible. A absolutely, Mr. Harold is, is doing very well doing very well. He uh, Actually, he was at a tournament last week uh, down in, I believe he was at Amstead, got big bass at the tournament there. Um, 
but he's back at the lake now. He's fishing every day. So. He's, he, he's, he's watching the house. Oh, huh? yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay y'all, so what I have here now, again, you want to keep the temperature of this oil. Now, look, I'm, I'm like, look, you can teach me something about fishing, but when it comes to uh, cooking yeah. the... You're going to teach me how to do this. I'm <laughs> yeah. watching. Well, look, this right here, you have to keep your oil around 350 degrees. Otherwise, this batter is going to get almost chocolate brown. And the fish is floating. So you know it's done inside. I'm gonna let it go right there because JT, we have a couple of more this. dishes to cook, but take a look at this. Huh? I'm gonna get uh, to eat this, right? I, I, look, look, I told <laughs> look, look, I told you it's almost like a fish in a pocket. You see, you can put it in your hand like that. And it is really full flavored, delicious, so easy to cook. It's great to cook with kids too. Of course, you always wanna be careful around that hot oil, but it's an easy thing to do on the dock, the fishing camp, or when friends come on the back patio, or right here on White Oak Lake. Anyway, y'all don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what makes Toledo Bend and this guy the best thing you're gonna to learn today. When JT's not catching trophy bias, he's reeling in plenty of white perch, what I like to call crappie. I have the perfect crappie burger recipe to serve at sunset on the deck. All right, JT, you see all of this beautiful crappie meat mm -hmm. down here? Now, I've poached this already. Now, now we have some crappie meat right here, uh, and we have bias meat. Why don't we look at the difference in the you two? Can tell, you can kind of tell by the textures of them the difference in them, this being, this being a bass and this being a creek. It actually, to me, looks a little bit wider, too. Yeah, this one looks a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. So this is the crappie? That's correct. That's the crappie and that's the bass. Now, right. but the texture of the meat would actually cook up above the same, I would imagine, huh? Sure, uh, sure. They're very nice and sweet meat, very clean meat uh, from Toledo Bend. Now, what is the difference in catching those two fish? What's the difference in the fight or the catch? Why would the fishermen be looking for one or the other on Toledo Bend? The, on Toledo Bend, the largemouth bass is, is the sought after sport fish this as far as that's right. This beautiful fish here. Now, how many pounds is that? Uh, that's about four pounds. Wow, what a beautiful, yeah. and is that normal out there? Because yeah, it is, huh? yeah, it is. That's, that's pretty common. You're gonna, if you spend a little time, you're gonna catch them like yeah. that. Yeah, sure. now, now you're talking about why they, they, they would go after one or the other? Yeah, it, the, the bass is, is the sport fish known on Toledo Bend. It's, uh, it's the tournament fish that everybody goes for. Um, that's pretty much the number one sought after fish on the lake. But the soccer lake, and what we do as far as guiding, uh, is our number one sought after fish. Um, they, they run in huge schools, we, we get to catch a lot of them, and they are the best thing to eat on the pond. And they are really, really delicious. And that's a great size fish. Is Absolutely. A, this, is, this, is a norm, this is an average fish for Toledo Bend. This is a white soccer lake. This is a black. Now, what makes Toledo Bend that ideal freshwater lake uh, in comparison to other freshwater lakes in Louisiana? I think it's the variation that you have, the diversity that you have in the lake. We got so much deep water in the lake and so much unfishable water in the lake. Um, the fish are able to breed and spawn in, in areas they can get away from the fishermen. And then a lot of the fish go out into the lake, especially this time of year, and they're away from everybody. So it, they, they are very prolific fish, and they get to grow up and be big there, too. And, and you know what I love about Toledo Bend also is just the not only accessibility, it's easy to get to right up in north Louisiana next to, to Miami, south of, uh, uh, south of uh, Shreveport. Right. Um, beautiful waterway right on the Texas border. And at the same time, overnight accommodations uh, everywhere, good restaurants there. So it's a perfect, perfect family outing as it well. Is. Good family uh, venue up there. Absolutely, it is. There's there's lots of places to stay from Cypress Bend, Wildwood, uh, the hotels there. Plenty of places to stay, and it is very family oriented, especially when you're going after the soccer lake. Right, great. Um, it, it, yeah, it, because kids can absolutely really... the kids do it. Um, we have a great time with the kids doing those. Well, well I, I tell you what, I'm going to talk about kids doing it. Well, uh, let's uh, let you and I jump on this crappie right. burger. Huh? So we've taken that beautiful meat. Now I've poached this in nice, lightly salted and peppered water. Why don't you go ahead and throw the egg in here? That's that's just, just with the egg. Oh yeah, just pour it on in there. Right. Who said you couldn't cook? Huh? Uh, well, I'm gonna... <laughs> my wife. Now, now you pick 
this up and we're gonna throw all of those seasonings in here as well. You can just uh, just, uh, just put it, yeah, 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 and just give it to me and I'm gonna rake it uh -huh. right on in. See that? I'm gonna rake my onions, my celery, my bell pepper. Y'all, do you notice that in Louisiana, generally speaking, it's gonna be onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic in just about everything we cook. Of course, a little bit red pepper flakes and you can put a few of the breadcrumbs down in there as well. Now, I would just continue to mix all of this around. Of course, the egg yolk, yeah, you can put just a little bit, that's perfect, right there. You can just kind of mash it all together and then, oh, you like that, huh? And you see when I squeeze it together, see what I have? A beautiful, beautiful uh, crappie burger right here. And this is how I cook it. I have a little vegetable oil. I brought that vegetable oil to about 375 degrees. You see it's at the smoke point. I'm gonna take this burger, I've already dipped it in some breadcrumbs, and I'm gonna put it right down into the skillet, and I'm gonna just, and of course the meat's already cooked, mm -hmm. because I've already poached the meat right here, and of course this can be served with a red sauce on top of it if you're Italian, a brown spicy sauce on top of it if you wanna be a, a little Cajun in the dish, or on a hamburger patty or bread. Absolutely. Great breakfast dish too. There you go. <laughs> Great breakfast. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flip this burger quickly. Look at that. See, I, all I'm doing is warming it up uh, right here. Now, where uh, where are people coming from? I mean, I, I just I just love it. I know y'all have calls from all over the all over the world there. But where where are your fishermen coming from? Most of our fishermen come from South Louisiana. Most of our fishermen come from Baton Rouge, Lafayette areas. Now, they, now, they're getting they're getting to do something different. Come up there and catch some soccer. Bass. Now Toledo Bend is. Uh, does everybody have to bring their boats and their, uh, uh, do y'all uh, supply everything? We supply everything, and you know, we are very much family. We have pontoon boats, bass boats. Uh, the pontoon boats is our number one deal. We like we take the families uh, as groups or corporate stuff as groups. Um, and everybody can get together on a boat and do that. Y'all, I tell you, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And I want you to show what I, let, let, me, let me show you this. If you take a look at that beautiful burger that I have right there, I put one on each one of these pieces of bread with a little ramelade sauce, lettuce and tomato, in addition to great bias, in addition to this great sacale or crappie. Let me tell you what, it's doggone good eating and great people up at Toledo Bend waiting to welcome you there. We're gonna be back in a minute with one more dish. Well, you did a great job on that. That's mine, one's yours. Well, that's exactly right. right. And look, we're gonna, let's turn our back so nobody sees us, huh? Okay. Huh? <laughs> When I'm at Toledo Bend finishing a great day of fishing with my friends, we swap fishing stores and sip on that famous drink, the Dock Rocker. Don't get any better than that. All right, y'all, I'm pouring this Dock Rocker here from Ross Barnett Reservoir over in Mississippi. Uh, what do y'all think? Look at the color of that, huh? That's good. Mm. It tastes really good too. Wow, I think, I it, tastes like it. I think yeah. it tastes great. I think it tastes great. Y'all, I promise you one extra dish, well actually two extra dishes. This right here, I got. I have to put a beautiful scoop of this uh, great vanilla ice cream. I'm gonna put a little scoop down in there. And this is a, this is a favorite of Toledo Bend. This is uh, <laughs> peach. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Peach. Now tell me about that big lunker. What is that, this lunker program I hear about over there? I, every time, lunker program, what does that mean? The lunker program is if, if you catch a double digit fish, a fish over 10 pounds, right. on Toledo Bend waters, and you bring it in and weigh it in at one of the designated weigh in stations, um, you will be given, and it's released back into the lake alive, you'll be given a replica of it. A replica, so they'll actually make they'll a replica of that size. That, that fish size is released. Fish. That, so that, the Bend Lake Association does the replicas for yep. Now, how many lunkers have been caught and released since, uh, say, y'all have been on the lake? Oh, a lot. lot. We had a record year this year. Yeah. 60, 63 this year, I think. And what's the largest that's been released? Uh, 1420. I, I, got to, I got to handle that and let it go. That is was, that right? Yeah. 14 pounds. Now, y'all, when you think that this here is four pounds, you said? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four pounds. <laughs> I had another 10. I had another 10. <laughs> really? Well, y'all, I, I, I said it. Uh, you, you know, Toledo Bend, 
lake, absolutely a spectacular place. Of course, living the dream, you know, the guide service there. Thank you so much. Y'all do such a wonderful it. job, and I appreciate y'all always taking care of us uh, on, on the lake. And uh, you will not, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. The hospitality, the camaraderie, the fishing, and just a good family feeling of being on that lake is incredible. And of course, it's Louisiana. So thank y'all so much thank for being you. here. Y'all go ahead and sip on your, uh, uh, yes, isn't Michelle and uh, Chris, you know, y'all just go ahead and drink right there. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for stopping by the camp today. It's so nice to have you. And remember, when you think about fresh fish or seafood, there's absolutely no place like Louisiana Sportsman's Paradise and no place for freshwater fishing with these guys on Toledo Bend. So see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Lies, and Alibis. Cheers. Huh? Doc Rocker. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Folsa's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulse.